Hey, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and today I'm taking a look at printing with high temperature filaments on my Creality K2 Plus. So let's go ahead and get started. As I've started printing with the ASA on the Creality K2 Plus, I've noticed some issues when it comes to heating and really excessive times it's taking to print. Now, one of the issues I noticed was if you take a look at your printer.config, scroll down to your virtual SD card. In a lot of cases, force leveling is set to true. In fact, that's the default value. With that, it probes the bed at 140 degrees and 50 degrees for the bed. So the nozzle's at 140, bed at 50. And once it turns on the heater for the chamber, it doesn't really get up to temperature very quickly, if at all. In fact, in some cases I found it never really gets to the temperature you have set. In my case with ASA, I want that chamber to get up to 50 degrees. And with such a low bed temperature, it's never going to get there in this lifetime. It just takes forever. And right now, it seems to me that the chamber uh, heater is very underpowered. Now, with that being said, turning off that forced bed leveling does make things a little bit better. But I still want to show some issues where if I hit slice right now, it's saying that this model should take about 37 seconds to print. If I hit print and send this to the printer, and let's go over and look at the device. This will take a minute. And you'll notice right now it does turn on the heated chamber. So it's turned on the heated chamber, but the bed is not on and the extruder is not on. Right now, nothing else will happen with this till this hits 50 degrees. Without the bed being turned on, it sort of struggles to get there and it just takes a while. I mean, right now it's 7.16 p.m. And let me just go ahead and try to set the bed at 100, which is my normal printing temperature for ASA. As soon as I click off of it, it goes back to zero. Because again, you can't make any changes till it actually gets to that 50 degrees. Now I'm going to pause the video and let's, let's give this 15, 20 minutes and see if it actually gets up to temperature. In almost 40 minutes, my chamber's only gotten to 39 degrees. So you can see it's extremely slow. And for a print that's gonna take under a minute, this is sort of ridiculous. So in order to address this, what I've done is I searched online and found several projects that were making some changes to the K2 Plus. And one of those projects was a repo by Jamin Collins. And let me show you his repo. Now Collins's improvements have some really interesting things they do. They really help with how things are set up. They also install mainsail as well as fluid. Now the problem with this is it requires you to root your K2 Plus. And for a variety of reasons, I don't want to root my K2 Plus. I think that'll mess with the warranty. I don't want to have to dig through what all these scripts do because there's a lot of different executables here and I just don't feel real comfortable with the rooting process. But as part of this, I reviewed some of the configurations he had and discovered an updated print start. So let's take a look at the updates he did and then my updates. Now what I did was copied his start print and just called it start underscore print underscore M3DP and basically made some changes. One of the changes I made is now if the chamber temperature is set above zero, it turns the bed temp on, which should heat up pretty quick, and then turns on the chamber temp. 
so it'll use the bed to help heat that chamber. Now, as you can see going through here, it's running the normal processes. The other change I made, and this goes down here, is I set it up so if I set adaptive to equal one, it'll do an adaptive bed mesh. So rather than doing a full bed mesh, it's now just going to mesh wherever the print is. And this should speed things, and this also should help deal with the so-called taco bed that is the K2 Plus bed. So let's give this a try and see how this changes things. So the first thing I did was let my chamber cool a little bit. So I'm in and around where I was when we first started. So let me go over to my slicer. To start off, let's go ahead and comment out the existing start underscore print code here. So I'm just gonna add a semicolon and go to a new line. And let me paste in my new code. So my new code is now pasted in. Let's save this. And then we'll start with the new print. Now with my new code, you'll notice that currently it is heating the bed, heating the extruder, and then heating the chamber simultaneously. Now if, let's start a timer and we'll see how long this takes and compared to the 45 minutes where it didn't even get to my target temperature. So let me pause and I'll come back in a couple minutes and we'll see when it actually hits 50 degrees for the chamber. Now with my new code, I was able to get the chamber to temperature within almost 15 minutes. And then with my new code, again, it took about 10 more minutes to start printing and then took 35 seconds for the print. So from start to finish, it took all told about 25 minutes. Now that's not ideal. I still have work to do on the adaptive mesh because the prints still appear to probe the whole bed rather than that just a small area of the patch. So I still have work to do. But for right now, I'm very pleased with how this is heating and this does speed things up dramatically. Now, before I call it a day, I just want to show you how to install the scripts I've created. I'll also show just some other things I've done. I've stored this all in a repo called K2 Plus Power Ops. And if you go over in Fluid, what you need to do is click on the configuration and you're going to look for my M3DP file over here in the repo and you can just download the raw so if i open up the raw i can right click and just go save as and save this raw file as the m3dp.cfg i'm just going to save that to my downloads so i save it then in my file explorer and let me minimize things i can go over Again, stay in my config, on Fluid, go to my downloads, and then I just grab that file and I can drag and drop it and that'll upload it. And we have, so you can see the file's been uploaded here. Now I'm gonna point out some things. I have it set up to heat soak for five minutes. You can change this, this value is in minutes. Right now I'm just doing five, because again, it takes about 15, 20 minutes to heat up anyway. And I think that's okay. Over in my printer.config, I need to add this line, include m3dp.config. I add that as my last include. So that's the last things included in this file. Just to make sure everything's working appropriately, I wanna make sure the force leveling is set to false. And then the last change I wanna make is actually over in the slicer. So let me show you that real quick as well. I'm just gonna back out so I'm at the top of my repo. And let me show you real quickly the changes I would make in the slicer. So in Orca Slicer, you probably wanna go in and go to your high temp filament, scroll down and make sure the activate temperature control is turned off you want it to run the start print code, the new start print code, so that it heats the chamber, the bed, and does a lot of things simultaneously. 
Now there's some limitations with my scripts. So let's talk about those real quick. Right now, the adaptive bed mesh does not appear to be working correctly. And I need to work on that. Um, in the readme here, I have some information on things that I found that can be changed. And I've added a couple more scripts here for leveling the bed. And I'll go over those in another video. And I pulled those from another great site and YouTube channel. So I've also added these great macros for PID tuning the extruder and PID tuning the bed. The last limitation you have here is most likely if you run an update for the files for the K2 Plus, if Creality puts out another update, it may wipe out the changes. The only thing you need to do is re-add this M3DP file and then just again, make sure that that include is still in your printer.config. And that should set you all back up and things should be good to go. Hopefully you found this helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks. Have a good day.